Hello everyone, my name is Soruj and I'll be presenting our paper uh, today. So let's start with a little bit of background. Our inspiration began by the application of neural networks using computer vision in autonomous embedded systems. So let's briefly discuss each of these technologies individually. Neural networks, which you can see an abstract silhouette on the left, for them are approximate functions. Uh, which are constructed by training multiple layers of neurons on supercomputers. The motivation of getting better and better accuracy compared to the ground truth has driven DNN developers to adopt ever more complex architectures. Accurate DNNs are thus inherently computation heavy. On the other hand, autonomous embedded systems are well based on uh, embedded systems. Even the latest embedded systems such as NVIDIA's Tegra-based lineup of products, which you can see the AGX Xavier here, have incredible performance, but are still limited in terms of relative computing prowess, power consumption, thermal dissipation, and space compared to the desktop and powerful servers that are used uh, to develop DNNs. As you can see, these two are largely different areas of research with different requirements and goals. However, we came across uh, the marriage of these technologies while working with the open source autonomous driving software Autoworld, which uses neural networks for object detection, image recognition, and even localization. And all these uh, DNNs share the same architecture. Uh, this in itself has resulted in other projects and publications, which we won't discuss here. However, we were interested in how this marriage is addressed in the literature. So, as is accustomed in uh, System research, we looked at the entire stack from hardware all the way to the application itself. So interestingly, there is ample research at the application level by implementing ever more sophisticated ways of reducing down requirements. Examples include quantization, low-rank approximation, uh, model optimization, etc. Often at the expense of uh, accuracy. At the other end, there's tons of research on hardware optimizations. Uh, for DNNs. For example, new types of processors and coprocessors are popping up, like the Tesla's AI chip, which is upcoming, um, and the NVIDIA's NVDLA process. However, as the researchers in the field of real-time systems, we realize that some goals cannot be achieved by purely application-level or hardware-level solutions. And I'll show you with detailed experiments in a second. But first, let's set our goals clear. So the DNN, um, first of all, might take too long to execute, right? Causing mission critical systems to fail. Therefore, our first goal is to ensure DNN execution is timely predictable. Second, the DNN might consume unacceptable amounts of energy, causing overheating, decreased range, or even system failure in extreme cases. Therefore, our second goal is that DNS should be power efficient. And third, the previous two issues might motivate developers to adopt less accurate DNN models, as I discussed before, to meet the timing requirements and be energy efficient. However, this would lead to loss of accuracy, which is also very important in these systems. Therefore, our third goal is to be as accurate as possible. So now let me show you our motivation. So here I want to show you that it is impossible to achieve all these three goals at the same time. If you don't get the framework, and the operating system involved. First, let's look at, uh, look at our first two goals. So achieving timing predictability while being power efficient is possible at hardware or system level via adjusting the dynamic voltage frequency scale, or DVFS, configuration of the system. There is a lot of research in this area, which either involves reactive DVFS adjustment at hardware level, such as NVIDIA's MaxQ, or based on applications characteristics such as POI. However, achieving these two goals simultaneously for DNNs is not simple. Reactive DVFS adjustment generally acts blind, and as we will show in our evaluation, doesn't perform well. Application-specific tools, on the other hand, look promising. However, very early on, we discovered that each DNN layer is its own application meaning it has its own power profile and reacts differently to DVFS adjustments. Here we have scoured all the possible DVFS configurations on the NVIDIA's Jetson TX2 for each layer of AlexNet. You can see the layer numbers on the y-axis. And recorded the DVFS configurations, you can see them number on the X, 
that consumes the least amount of power. So the power here, power consumption here means the total millijoules consumed over the execution time of that layer. As you can see, each layer has a different optimal DBFS configuration. So what about achieving timing predictability and good accuracy? This can only be down, uh, done at application level by changing the application configuration. However, different layers have different sensitivities to approximation. Here, I don't go over the details, but speaking theoretically, to achieve a 12 millisecond deadline in AlexNet, here's the optimal approximation uh, value that needs to be achieved for each layer on a Jetson TX2. Uh, for more information on this, you can read our APNet paper published in RTSS. So already we see that existing application level and system hardware level solutions need to change for DNFs. However, our goal was to achieve all three at the same time. Timing predictability, power efficiency, and accuracy. So let's make layer level solutions for both application level and system level and run them simultaneously. This is what we get. So uh, in this experiment, the deadline is set to 20 millisecond and we measure the projected deficit the system is going to have at each layer. We'll talk about how this can be done, the deficit can be calculated in the design, but in an abstract way, the deficit shows if the system is ahead or behind an ideal schedule. So AlexNet can easily reach the 20 millisecond deadline uh, here, uh, we said here, by some DVFS adjustments. It doesn't need any accuracy adjustments. However, as you can see in our experiment, both the energy and accuracy keep decreasing at the same rate. Initially, this, uh, the deficit is almost zero, but still negative. In an attempt to reduce this deficit, the negative deficit means the system is behind the ideal schedule and is likely going to miss the 20 millisecond deadline. Both the system level solution and the application level solution switch to a lower configuration. You can see around uh, four, uh, layer four that happens. Um, and then continues and their search continues all the way around layer 10. Um, so at layer 10 until the, uh, the deficit becomes positive. However, you can see that both of them, because both of them are trying at the same time and both of them are using discrete configurations, both of them overshoot widely. And you can see that the deficit is now positive. So the uh, system level solution sees this uh, as a way uh, actually to be able to save energy, right? Um, so it will switch actually to a slower DVFS configuration. But here the system level solution again overshoots again, causing the deficit to become negative. You can see that around layer 19 it's negative again, which results in the application level solution decreasing the accuracy even further. And you can see in the end, everything works out, uh, but the deficit is way too positive, the accuracy is lower significantly, and the whole thing is a mess. Um, and here's what happens, uh, basically. We have a, a negative feedback loop, right? Which is, even if you're running it, uh, re running your system level uh, solution and application level solution at different frequencies, you still potentially get this negative feedback loop, which both of them try to say, uh, save the system from missing a deadline. Both of them overshoot and then try to correct their mistake. And then you get this negative feedback loop forever. So for these motivations, again, as we discussed, we need per layer adjustments and we need coordination. Uh, one more thing we need to discuss before getting to the design. Uh, we, we didn't realize this until we actually tried to use this in AutoWare. But most autonomous embedded systems have multiple instances of DNF. The issue here is that adjusting DVFS configuration for one layer of one DNN instance will affect all the other uh, DNN instances, often negatively. Here we ran our layer level system solution on eight instances of ResNet and recorded both the normalized latency and the normalized energy. As you can see, the first DNN is lucky. Well, it's greedy. Um, and therefore it is fast and energy efficient. But, but this greed has resulted in other DNNs performing much worse and having an uneven distribution among, among them. So the takeaway uh, from these motivations are that we need a new system, right? 
So before we begin our, to design our system, let's set our core goals. So the most important is, of course, these four that we motivated. The ultimate goal is to design a tiny predictable framework for multi-DNN systems that can conserve energy and maximize accuracy. However, we should also bake flexibility into our design. We would like this framework to be used in anywhere from small drones to production systems to highly safety critical autonomous vehicles. Therefore, before we begin, we set three optimization targets for the three typical scenarios we have identified. So we, so we have minimum energy we show as MP, which is used when new OS is using systems with critically small energy envelopes, such as remote sensing devices, smartwatches, small drones, etc. Uh, max accuracy or MP can be used when new OS is deployed in extremely mission critical applications. Alternatively, in applications such as autonomous driving, an external policy controller can choose this configuration in certain scenarios. Finally, we have uh, balanced energy and accuracy, which is the catch-all method, where NUS can try to optimize everything on its own in a balanced way. We do, however, give some control to the system designer or the external policy controller to adjust the sensitivity of this balancing act. So, for our design, we give four major points. Um, first, how do we ensure timing predictability? Uh, well, the answer is we use lag analysis, well, where we keep track of the progress each DNN instance is making and compare it against an ideal schedule. So you can see we actually record per layer execution time as EL. Um, and we calculate the ideal schedule based on the proportional deadline technique. So you can see the per layer sub deadline on the left, DL, and how it is calculated, you can see it on the right. So based on any recorded execution trace of a DNN, we can calculate sub deadlines for each layer using proportional deadline. That sub deadline can then act as the ideal execution time for that layer. If we go over this ideal execution time, the lag becomes negative, meaning the system is behind the ideal schedule and needs to run faster um, to catch up. And if we go over the ideal schedule, the lag becomes positive, meaning the system is ahead of schedule. And then the system can uh, run slower to save energy or be more accurate. So the second is how do we coordinate? Well, the answer is twofold. First, you can see on the left, we keep track of a cohort. The cohort is a pair of lag and X for each DNN instance shared between all DNN instances. The value of X is the approximation configuration that DNN has chosen. Second, we design our core algorithms, you can see on the right, to take into account this cohort when making decisions. So let's discuss these algorithms. So these two algorithms work in hand in hand to choose the best DDFS configuration for the entire cohort and minimize accuracy loss. And I'll show you a more intuitive way of how these two work together in the next slide. But here you can see the abstract of both of these algorithms. Uh, the first algorithm is our Delta calculator, which based on each last reported value of lag in the cohort, finds individually the best DVFS configuration for each DNN instance. And this is happening in a distributed way. So each DNN basically it runs this algorithm. The key here is the, oops, sorry. The key here is the lookup procedure, which needs to be fast. For this, we rely on a speed up power of table that is stored in a hash format. For more information on this, uh, please see the paper. Uh, so this algorithm then first calculates the required speed up uh, on the given sub deadline for a layer, uh, calculate it and also it takes into account the lag and uses the calculated speed up, which again, I have to mention can be a slowdown if you want to save energy as a search key for the speed up power up table. So the second algorithm takes this calculation, which will be a set of possible DBFS configuration. Uh, and calculates a second speed up for each DBFS configuration. This time purely by using application level approximation configuration. This speed up, or again slowdown, is called SA and is based on the projected effect of the given DBFS configuration on other DNS. This can also be easily calculated based on the hashed speed up power up table for each DNN type. Finally, 
the required approximate configuration is found based on this second speed up. The key here is again the lookup procedure. In our implementation, we only use low rank as the approximation configuration. Therefore, this step is fast. However, for even more choices of approximation configurations, we provide the speed up accuracy table, which is also hashed and stored. Given that the number of possible configura uh, DVFS configurations range in the tens of thousands, as we'll see in the evaluation, the approximation configuration lookup has minimal overhead in comparison. So here on the left, uh, basically you can see the overall uh, way that, the, the, that our algorithms operate. So you can see that you have the cohort. Here we have NDN and instances. Uh, so for each value in the cohort, the delta calculator calculates a, an optimal DVFS configuration, which you can see in the second row from delta 1 all the way to delta n. So based on each of these ideal DVFS configurations, the XI calculator will calculate a required approximation, if you will. Um, so the effect is that choosing any um, of the DVFS configurations will have implications for accuracy loss for all the DNNs in the code, right? So in essence, the previous two algorithms would not solve our optimization problem. What they'll do is they create a projected decision tree for each DNA instance. Based on this tree, we can choose a pair of configurations, a DVFS configuration and an approximation configuration for the local DNA instance at the layer boundary. How this decision is made purely depends on the system requirement. For example, for max accuracy, we only consider paths that involve no approximation. But please see the paper if you want to learn more about our design. So now comes the interesting stuff. So our implementation and evaluation. Our implementation is based on CAFE, and we made it available as an op open source project. To use new OS, uh, you don't need to use any APIs or change your model. You do need to, however, generate hash tables for DVFS configurations for each platform and each DNN. You also need to generate the low rank approximation version of your DNN model. The scripts for this we already provide. So this initial cost of preparing these tables and the low rank model uh, has to only be incurred once and will in, uh, substantially reduce the runtime complexity of our approach, making it efficient as a real-world solution. Um, so we also extensively evaluate new OS. We, uh, we evaluate it on the NVIDIA's low-power Jetson TX2, which is an embedded device, and the next generation and much faster Jetson AGX Xavier, which is actively being pushed for autonomous embedded systems by NVIDIA. Uh, we use image recognition DNNs, AlexNet, GoogleNet, ResNet, and VGGNet as a representative of our target platform. We set our target latencies based on DNN complexity and platform. Uh, just uh, it, the deadlines are based on the characteristics of the DNNs. Um, we also um, test our platform uh, using various sizes of cohorts using a small cohort with one DNN instance to directly compare against all the approaches that are multi-DNN agnostic. Um, and we also have medium, uh, a medium cohort and a large cohort uh, to test our multi-DNN capability. We also include a mixed scenario, which we uh, include a DNN instance from each of these to show the versatility of our approach. Okay, so let's uh, first evaluate the energy profile. Uh, so, this um, first we evaluate um, energy profile, latency, and accuracy for a balanced approach, uh, which we believe is going to be the most uh, widely applicable uh, approach to general applications. Um, so, for the small cohort, we compare against system level solutions, Prejul, Poet, and Race to Idle and hardware level solutions max n and max q provided by nvidia um, and you can see the breakdown for energy for the small cohort we uh, compare against all the solutions for medium and large cohorts we compare only against prejul to save space and also because in our uh, test it vastly outperforms other solutions anyway 
So as you can see across the board, NeoOS outperforms other solutions uh, because of its uh, layer-wide design. Its capability to coordinate between application and system and its ability to communicate between multiple DNN instances. You can see here that we have uh, about 68% average improvement on TX2 and 46% uh, average improvement on the AJX Xavier for the small cohort and 70% average improvement on TX2 for the medium and large cohort. However, there are some anomalies here. As you can see, for VGGNet and for the uh, medium cohort and for some DNN instances for the large cohort on the AGX, um, new OS performs slightly worse than Prejo, and we shall explain why in the next slide. So here's the latency uh, breakdown. As you can see here, new OS outper outperforms other solutions, and I'll give you the numbers in a second. But the anomalies we talked about here, you can see that the Prejul would miss the deadlines we've set for it. Um, however, new OS would not. So the sacrifice in energy was to uh, meet the deadline. And here's our average improvements. Um, again, across the board, we, we see improvements. Um, TX2 has uh, more headroom for improvements, but you can see also substantial improvements on the AGX Xavier. We also do tail latency analysis, where we first uh, measure the deadline miss ratio, and you, we find that it's about 3% across the board for small, medium, and large cohorts. We also record tail latency. Here it's the 99.9 percentile. And you can see that it is within an acceptable range, given that it only happens less than 3% of the time. Finally, we also measure the relative accuracy. So this accuracy, how it is calculated, is a little bit um, complicated. In the paper, we detail how this accuracy is calculated. So please consult the paper if you have questions. Um, here, we only compare against APNET because that's the only runtime um, dynamic uh, accuracy adjustment application we know for DNNs. Um, which is tailored for autonomous embedded systems. And because, just purely because NeoS has the ability to adjust DVFS configuration, let alone the optimization algorithm, it can outperform APNet. We also do evaluation on our flexibility, which we compare our max accuracy, mean energy, and balance approach shown as TS here against Prejul. And overall, um, for the Jetson TX2, the balanced approach performs very well, so holds up very well. But you can actually get, uh, especially for medium and large cohorts, lower um, accuracy loss uh, if you use MA, uh, actually zero accuracy loss if you use MA, and um, minimum energy consumption if you use MP. Uh, and on the right, you can see the configuration space for the DVFS and accuracy adjustment uh, on the uh, Jetson TX2. Um, this is in a ternary plot. And again, how we did this is please consult the paper. But you can see that the desirable configurations, even though we're trying to optimize this problem, the desirable configurations are down on the corner on the left. But still, they have huge implications which one you choose. And just to give you uh, a point of view on how complex this problem is, is you have almost 12,000 DBFS configurations on the Jetson TX2 and 52,000 DBFS configurations, unique DBFS configurations on the AGX X8. And we also measure our overhead, both in terms of computation and memory overhead. So the computation overhead is, as you can see, relatively negligible. It's in microseconds. Um, relative to the execution time of the DNN instances, uh, the, this is for AlexNet. And on the right, you can see the memory overhead for all the, the DNN that we use. Uh, so what is unavoidable is the low rank, um, but you can see on the right, we have, we have also included the ratio to total memory, which shows that comfortably you can have uh, up to eight instances of even the largest one, VGGNet, on the AGX Xavier and uh, the TX2. 
So I would like to conclude by saying that this problem is uniquely positioned for the system community. So the AI researchers and hardware researchers don't have the tools that we have to solve this problem. And uh, I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Here's my email and here's the source code of new OS. If you have issues, please raise an issue on GitHub and I'll get to it right away. Thank you.